Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the great pleasure of meeting with John Flannery, who's president of Flannery Sales Systems. Welcome, John. Gerhard, always a pleasure. Good to see you. So what is the biggest challenge sales organizations face in uh, 2022? Picking the right opportunities to work on. Our economy is so fragmented. You know, you can't just say, how's business? Because there's so many different pieces to it now. Sellers have to be really careful in competing on the right opportunities. But the one thing, Gerhard, I think consistently throughout the years is the sellers have to be able to establish value. I came to one of your programs years ago, and Forrester Research had said that something like 26% of sellers could really articulate or help the buyer to understand the value that they bring. And that's something that is not going to go away. It's not about your product or service. It's about how they use your product or service. And that's something we focus on with our customers. You are sort of the uh, specialist when it comes to sales process. Um, how can sales organization create a consistent sales process? One way to do it is to ask your customers, the people who continually buy from you, what did they go through? How did they vet their options? How did they get the criteria? And listen to those individuals. And then, as you know, we get with our customers sales, customer service, marketing, product development. And we make sure we include those individuals and understand what's happening on the buying side. Map that buying process and understand it. It's changing continually because buyers are changing. They're getting younger. There's different influences. But if you ask them a lot of the time, they'll tell you. Let's talk about another success factor. Um, what mistakes do sales leaders make when it comes to coaching salespeople? The one I see the most, regardless of the experience of the salesperson that they're trying to coach, is telling them what to do. We got to back them up and we got to ask them to use the same type of approach that they would with a customer. And I get it with some sellers, you have to be more insightful and lead with what you want them to do, but it's still an ask. It's still an understanding. Do they understand it? Do they understand where the gaps lie? You also have to be very consistent with your coaching and also leave time in there for ad hoc coaching because that's what some sellers want. They want you on the end of the month or the end of the quarter. So leave some time for ad hoc coaching. And then as you know, in our programs, we focus on skills. So many managers are coaching deals. They're what I call deal engineers, product, price, service, TNCs. Make sure that you're coaching the skill that helps them fill all of the steps of the buying process because sellers will advance to the level of their weakest skill. If they're getting stuck time and time again, that will repeat. So we got to coach the skill. What is your unique value that differentiates you from all the other consultants out there? We only work with four or five customers at a time. And what I'll focus on after we do some initial discovery with a prospect, and our team does this too, is what happens before, what happens during, and what happens after the training. And if we don't agree with the prospect, soon to be customers, what happens after the training, it's not a good fit. What do we do before? What we do during the workshop, those initial workshop are always led by me. And then last is what happens after the workshop, what happens when they walk out the door? Because as you know, if we don't do something quickly, going back to old behaviors happens overnight. So we set up those three things very clearly. There's no surprises by the time we get to the point to kick off the project. Can you share a quick uh, customer success story? Be happy to. This summer, we began working with a company that's in the engineering, testing, and localization types of services with their customers. They're about $150 million customer, 300 people in different customer facing roles. And that was made up of 16 acquisitions, Gerhardt. So they were stepping on each other's toes. They were going into certain markets with two salespeople. It was just not well coordinated. So we were able to come in and put together what I mentioned to you before, during, and after the workshop. And we delivered those programs. And for September, October, and November of this year, their top line is up 24%. They've reduced their selling cost. We're still working on what that looks like from a financial standpoint. And the most important piece is customers better understand from these 
15 different brands being rolled up into one company, what each group is doing. We were able to unify that and help them to get a lift very quickly. So how can people learn more about Flannery Sales Systems? They could Google Flannery Sales Systems. Our URL is drive-revenue.com and um, speak to us. Awesome. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gerhard. Good to talk with you.